inch height deficit to Sipko, who's unusually tall. Arm length advantage of two inches for the Ukrainian fighter. They weighed in within a pound and a half of the 168 pound limit. And tonight, Lacey has gone up to 179 for a five pound functional weight advantage over Sipko at 174. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Jeff Lacey, Vitaly Sipko fight is scheduled for 10 rounds, non title, using the rules of the Florida State Athletic Commission that you see in your screen. Jim, real quick, the four criteria that the judges will use to score each individual round, clean punching, effective aggressiveness, ring generalship, and defense with a strong emphasis on clean, effective punching. Jim. All right, thank you, Harold. And meanwhile, let's take a look at uh, Vitaly Sipko. Four and one, two KOs. That uh, one is the only loss of his career. Since his brief meeting with Jeff Lacey that took place June 5, 2004 in Joplin, Missouri. And this was a part of Lacey's rise to prominence in the division a long string of knockouts for the guy who was a middleweight on the 2000 Olympic team in Sydney Australia in the middle of round one their heads met a horrendous accidental head butt, which produced that massive cut on Sipko's forehead at the end of the second round the fight was stopped and ruled a technical draw so this is the tally Sipko's second crack so to speak at getting at Jeff Lacey and uh, Larry Merchant he spent a half hour with the Ukrainian fighter yesterday. He is the classic man of few words. And among those few words, he said that despite the fact that he resembles Joe Calzaghe physically, a tall southpaw, he doesn't think that anything that Calzaghe did, he can use from his style. Emmanuel, you've had him in your training camp. What kind of a guy is Vitaly Sipko? A basic fighter. He's nothing that exceptional noise, but he's a good boxer, and right now, if he's really focused and in good shape, and he should be stimulated like anyone after seeing the beat that Calzaghe put on Lacey, because Lacey is very vulnerable to anybody now to have confidence about beating. In the months since his loss to Joe Calzaghe almost nine months ago, Jeff Lacey has split from his former promoter Gary Shaw, and some say that was partially because Lacey was upset over favorable comments Shaw made about his stablemate Winky Wright. Uh, he has gotten married. He has left a Dan Birmingham supervised training camp in Las Vegas to come back to Tampa. And that, that last Larry Merchant leaving his trainer Dan Birmingham in Las Vegas and coming back here may be the most disquieting to those around him of all of the actions that have taken place since the Kalzaki fight. Yeah. Uh, he said that Las Vegas was too boring for him. <laughs> That's very difficult to believe. Um, and I think that reflects the, the tumult that he has been going through. He calls what happened in Wales a bad day. A bad day is when your boss whips up on you or your check bounces. He had a Michael Richards type bad day that night. Lacey was quite confident, at least outwardly so, prior to his arrival in Manchester to fight Kalzaki. But in the months since, he has decided, uh, in retrospect apparently, it was a bad idea to go to Manchester. It was a bad idea to fight at an odd hour. It was a bad idea to eat English food. Well, he should have thought about all of that before he got on the no, plane going over no, there. No, he's got to find some way that he can get back into the ring and have some self-belief. One of the things he said was, that wasn't me in there. Well, I think a jury would have convicted him. That was him. Well, and the is. question that comes up is, was he really overrated and Calzaghe just underrated? He has an identity as a puncher. When punchers get taken apart by boxers, it is often difficult for them to regain their confidence. That is the challenge Jeff Lacey faces as he begins the road back from the Calzaghe disruption tonight. Let's go to ring announcer Lupe Contreras now for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, from the St. Pete Times Forum in Tampa, Florida. We welcome you to an evening of world-class professional boxing being brought to you by Winky Promotions, along with Oscar de la Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions, in association with Rockstar Energy Drink, Party like a rock star. These bouts are being sanctioned by the Florida State Boxing Commission Chairman, 
Eduardo La Casa, Vice Chairman Don Bowen, Commissioners Barbara Auger, Ramiro Ortiz, and Dr. Donald Perry. Executive Director is Thomas Malloy, Timekeeper Candyman Bill Anello, and our physicians at ringside we have Drs. Adam Brunson along with Dr. Carlos Rodriguez. This is our co-featured bout of the evening set for 10 rounds of boxing in the super middleweight division. The judges are Paul Herman, Mike Patrick, and Mark Streisand. Referee, Tommy Kimmins. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, he sets into the ring wearing blue trunks, trimmed in white, and weighing in at 167 pounds. His professional record, 19 victories, with one lone defeat, one no decision, and 10 of his victories coming by way of knockout. Fighting up near Prospetrosk, Ukraine, Vitaly Sipko. His opponent across the ring in the red corner. He steps in paying tribute to America's troops wearing the colors of camouflage. And weighing in at 166 and one half pounds. As an amateur, he proudly represented the USA in the 2000 Olympics. And as a professional, he maintains a record consisting of 21 victories. With one defeat, one no decision. And 17 of his victories coming by way of knockout. The former IBF super middleweight champion of the world. From St. Petersburg, Florida, Jeff Lepo-Lacy. Take his jacket off. Get his shirt off. Take his jacket off. Gentlemen, this is a 10-round fight, and I gave you the instructions. I want to remind you, this on is here to watch you fight, so keep it clean. Touch him up. Joe Calzaghe not only schooled Lacey, he flunked him and expelled him. This is an attempt by Lacey to get back into school. Round one is finally sound, or the bell for round one is finally sounded, and uh, Vitaly Sipko acknowledged to us yesterday he is an overt southpaw. Lacey fires a right hand down the pipe that lands. The possibility of their heads coming together again is quite good. Yep, and right now, Lacey's landing punches straight through the center for the most part. And Vitaly is not moving his head at all. He's just keeping it right there. He's not slipping at all, either pulling back a step and throwing a hook with his right hand. He's just standing right there. Now he finally throws a punch, does Vitaly Sipko, letting the jab go after having taken some early shots from Jeff Lacey. And Lacey there is able to land a left hook and he, now throws the right right down the, the pipe again. He's throwing left and right, everything straight between the gloves. There he is, right again. He's not throwing anything on the outside, just simply straight through the center. And Sipko, with no head movement, has so far been a sitting duck for Lacey's power shots. It's no way to fight Jeff. No, and if he continues to fight like that, this fight won't be long. Boom. Lacey's right hand shot partially blocked, but he had a very good idea with it. Now Lacey lands a jab. Sipko starts to now, counter with his jab. Sipko's doing very good. If he keeps working his right hand jabbing and hooking off of it, he stands a chance. But once again, he's still getting hit straight through the center. 
Lacey working very well with a straight right hand through the center. It's the basic offensive tactic to use against a southpaw like Sipko, and Lacey has mastered it early. Intense Jeff Lacey in round one. Yeah, but, but you know, he, what he's doing right there with a more intelligent fighter, he would have a problem. He, he's doing what he's supposed to do. He's going straight through the center since he's found out that the guy has no defense for his straight punches. And it, with a more intelligent fighter who would be jabbing him and moving to the side, he would have a problem. Sipko's face is reddening as he absorbs power shots continuously from Lacey here in round one. Lacey's landed. Nine of 19 no power shots already in the round, and some of them are perfect flush right hands up, up the middle. Second-guessing second, second guessing himself, Emmanuel Lacey said he didn't box enough against Calzaghe going for the knockout. You think he could have boxed with Calzaghe? I don't think so. I, I think he, he, he just basically seemed like he wasn't there. He really underestimated his opponent and overestimated his own talent going into that fight. Well, maybe he couldn't have boxed Kalzaki per se, but shouldn't he have tried to use the jab more to set up his power shots rather than just waiting on a big punch? Yeah, Kalzaki fought a very good fight. He's, you know, I never expected him to beat Lacey. In fact, I picked Lacey to win the fight. But uh, Kalzaki is a much more elusive and balanced out fighter than I ever anticipated. He actually beat Lacey on the inside as well as outside. Watching Kalzaki against Lacey, you got a sense of why he's never lost a professional fight. Right, I have much respect for him. But that was a good round for Lacey, his first round since that thrashing. And yep. as we go to Vitaly Sipkor's corner, where the trainer will speak Russian, our interpreter is Mark Leibovich. Vitaly, I want you to be more active. Come on. Just, just work. Work him up. Work him up. Work up. Just like you did last time, remember? Left, right, left. Jab from the right side. But, uh, but don't, don't keep him at a long distance, okay? Give him a fame of juke. He's scared of you. He's nervous. Give him a fight. Double the jab sometimes, so the right hand will come as you're coming forward. You saw trainer Dan Birmingham talking to Lacey between rounds. Remember, Birmingham is also the trainer for Winky Wright. So what this means is that Dan Birmingham is not with Winky Wright in his dressing room as he prepares. And there's a big right hand by Lacey that knocks Sipko halfway across the ring. I mean, Lacey he, was 13 out of 25 power shots in round one, and round two starts the same way, Emmanuel. He can't miss him. I mean, Sipko doesn't move his head at all. He just keeps it straight there. If he would just move off to the side, uh, anything, he could resent a problem. But right now, Lacey's fighting a perfect fight and just shooting power punches because he found out he can hit the guy at any time he desires to hit him. There's a well, large welt under the right eye of Vitaly Sipko now. In, in his corner, Sipko was told to get close to Lacey. You know, I, don't, I don't necessarily agree with that, but I just think he just, he just to move his head more. Do what he wants to do outside or inside, but he's got to move his head. But he, well, if he doesn't move his head, it doesn't matter whatever he does. Well, Lacey isn't moving in his head either, so it's just going to be a shootout to see who can land the harder punches fast. I'm just guessing, based on what I've seen in the first round and a half, Vitaly Sipko doesn't have nearly the kind of power that Jeff Lacey had in his punches. Jeff is a strong puncher, not really what he pitches himself as being a real devastating puncher. Well, and, and, and it appears Their that... Their heads come together. It appears that Sipko is mostly concerned with neutralizing Lacey's left hook, and that's why the right hand is coming straight through. But actually, if, if Sisko punches more, he's Sipko a throws a left and landed it, beating Lacey to the punch. Well, Wait. if he's not going to avoid getting hit with those punches, the best thing he can do is start firing back himself because he is landing when he does punch. Better let his left hand go. He's not going to be able to control Lacey just with the right, or so it would appear. Lacey again pops him with the right hand straight up the middle. If he neutralizes that one punch, he could do okay. Lacey's right hand. Hasn't come close to neutralizing it yet. That time, Lacey sweeps the right and falls short. But when he throws it straight up the pipe, he's landing it over and over and over. And that is marking up Sipko's face. The right hook very, works very effective for Sipko when he throws it. Body shot from Sipko. 
And Lacey lands another thudding right. Zipko stepping forward into a Lacey left hook. Zipko finally manages to block a Lacey right with his gloves. And when Zipko throws his left hand, he should throw it through the center the same way that Lacey is throwing his right hand. But he throws it on the outside, if you notice. He loops it. He loops it instead of shooting it straight through the center where Lacey is very vulnerable. That looping left hand by Zipko could give Lacey a chance to counter with a straight right. And also to cause a collision of heads when he throws those wide gaps. Another sudden right hand up the middle by Lacey to punctuate round two. Good work, good work, good work. And I'll start bringing the left hook. One, two, and get close. Boom, okay. bang. You find you're not close enough, double the jab. Boom, boom, bang. Okay. Good work, good work. You're busting his ass up, Jeff. Small glint on his right eye with a plant. Thank you. A couple deep ones. Relax. Now you got him jittery. Now start using your feint a little bit. Okay. And that double right hand. Listen, listen to me. Work, work left hand. Work left hand more. And be more active. Here you can see Lacey landing the punch has been the most dominant punch in the entire fight. A straight right hand right through the center. There's been a lot of sharp right hands by Lacey. That one got the crowd's attention as uh, Sipko skittered across the ring, but... Jeff has landed that punch 20 or 30 times already. Power shots in round two, Lacey 11 out of 30. Sipko eight out of 22. What Sipko did just there, he should do more often when he moved his head slightly over to his left and avoided the straight punches from Lacey. And if he does that and would pick up his volume, he stands a chance of winning this fight. That would be shocking to most in the crowd who think they see a wipeout so far, Emmanuel. So far, but I still see signs that Sipko could win this fight. I see Lacey starting to fall apart, getting a little sloppy right now. In Sipko's corner, they asked him to throw more left hands. But as Emmanuel Stewart has pointed out, Sipko has a tendency to loop the left. Let's go. May be dangerous to throw it a lot under those circumstances. A straight shot would work better. But I think he just needs to pick up his volume right now. It seems his punches are still sharper and more crisper at this stage than Lacey. And that's the proper move. What he did just there, slipping to the side and letting the punch go over his head. The right hand was coming from Lacey. A little quick right hook for Sipko. Partially blocks the right hand up the middle. Now he's neutralizing Lacey's best punch. And the he lands right his hand. own straight left hand, which is potentially a punch they can score with. Lacey with another right hand. Sipko lands a little right hook, and this time flips the straight right and lands a left over the top. Sipko must be some kind of way getting a message back what I'm saying during the broadcast because he's starting to avoid getting hit with the right hands now. That's the shot right there. Left hand left. down the pipe. That's right. And there the it center. is again. This is the mirror image of what Lacey's been doing to Vitaly, but now Vitaly Sipko is seizing the initiative. So Lacey feels the need to come back, hits him with a right hand over the top. Zipko shows he can wrestle, holds his own in the end fighting for the moment. Uppercut partially landed for Lacey, right hook landed for Zipko. Zipko is punching with much more crispness and more power than Lacey right now. Good right, right, right hook for Zipko. And Zipko's confidence begins to rise as he lands a left. And if you notice, he hasn't got hit with the right hand just around. Steps that's away from the dip. right hand there. Oh, he's been much more effective ducking, slipping, or sliding away from the right hand in this round. And starting to let his left go as Lacey lunges into it there. Let's go. There's a cut that came as a of the collision of heads right they there. They finally came together again, so there's Zipko cut in the third round, and he responds by hitting Lacey with two of his best punches of the fight. Lacey finally manages to land another right hand. Now Zipko covering up as Lacey suddenly gets very active. And misses with those punches. I saw, actually, Lacey threw a lot of punches, but I didn't see anything land. I agree. Clean. He did not land down the stretch. Sipko got the better of that round, in my view. We'll see what Harold Letterman has to say when we show you the beginnings of his card at the beginning of the next round. 
Работает, все нормально. Work with him. You, you see, you, you, you stop, you stop working. Hit him, hit him, hit him more and more. You, you see, he's, he's tired. So, don't, don't wait, don't wait. Here you can see the headbutt right here when they both collided, throwing looping punches. And that's what I was expecting earlier in the fight. And I'm glad that it, at least it didn't happen in the first few rounds. And the cut is to the left side Same, of Sipko's yes. left eye. Punches going to the outside of the head's going to the inside. Lacey said, Let's this go. is a perfect time to be fighting me. Meaning after that loss to Calzaghe and with the nine-month layoff, we'll see how perfect it is if he can continue where he left off in the left. <laughs> Tipko can continue where he left off in the last round. He had better numbers than Lacey on power shots in the third round. Harold, how do you have it through three? <laughs> okay, Jim, I agree yeah, with you. Yeah, Two yeah. rounds to one. 29, 28, Jeff Lacey. Jim, I got to tell you, uh, Jeff Lacey in the first two rounds landed some monumental straight right hands. I got to tell you, he misses the looping right hand, but the straight right hand gets in there. If he, if he would have hit him, he would have knocked him out. Sipko definitely won the third round. In any case, if the fight gets stopped in this round, it's a no decision. If it goes beyond the fourth, we go to the score cuts to determine the winner. If the fight is stopped on that cut that Sipko has. At the, right now... Sitko seems to be the fresher in terms of the, his punches as compared to Lacey. Three, no punches, no punches. And while Sitko's left eye is bleeding just outside the eye from the cut that was brought on by that headbutt, Lacey's right eye is beginning to swell from the Sitko left hand. Sitko is landing much better precision punches right now. He is landing that left hand with metronome precision for the last round and a half. Well, what he's doing now is he's seeing the right hand coming and stepping back so that it doesn't reach him with full force as it was in the first couple of rounds and still working with his right hand to neutralize the left hook, which is Lacey's best shot. And Lacey's right eye is closing up too. He's swelling quite, quite badly at this stage. Get out of there. Let him go. That's the punch right there. Sipko straight and another one, and this one center. actually stunned Lacey and moved him back. So far, maybe the best clean punch of the entire fight was that straight left hand right there from Sipko. No punches, definitely. Well, it was, right, let's, go. let's say it was on a par with some of the right hands Lacey threw in the first couple of rounds when he was skittering Sipko around the ring with the right hand. But now, Sipko is settling into a tactical groove, and Lacey may have to Don't find worry. another Let answer. Go. Let him go. Work that out. The cut man in Sipko's corner, Malcolm Garrett, did a great job so far, because that's a bad cut. Malcolm Garrett, one of those longtime pros, totally anonymous within the sport. You'll see him in a camp here, camp there. He pops up all over the place, kind of like Miguel Diaz out in Vegas. Malcolm knows what he's doing. Lacey trying to break Sipko's guard up with uppercuts and right hands. Sipko just leaning in on him, holding the gloves in a protected position, waiting for a chance to retaliate. Quick right hook by Sipko. And another one. Quick left hand by Sipko. This could be a crucial round if it ends up being stopped on exit. Well, it won't matter now. Here's Winky Wright. As we watch Jeff Lacey in action against Vitaly Sipko, Wright warms up in his dressing room without the presence of trainer Dan Birmingham. But at this stage in Winky's career, what exactly would Birmingham tell him that he hasn't heard before? Nothing. Winky Wright, veteran fighter, mature individual, knows what he's doing as he prepares to follow Jeff Lacey into the ring. Winky Wright's first fight in his hometown in 14 years. In Ike Quarte. That'll be coming along immediately after the conclusion of Lacey Sipko. <laughs> two, 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 two punches, two punches. Uh, left, right, left, left, right, right, okay? This is the kind of fight that for Lacey was considered a confidence builder. We'll see how much confidence he can get out of this. Compubox numbers in round four, right, or through we'll round four. Like Lacey, 57 out of 194. Sipko, 55 out of 154. 
So Sipko, since he started letting his hands go in the third round, is landing at a higher connect percentage than Lacey. But both of Sipko's eyes are swelling. There's a cut outside his left eye. Lacey is beginning to swell around the right eye. Lacey must have thought this was going to be an easy fight in the first couple of rounds when he seemed to be landing every straight right hand. Now things have become a lot more difficult as Vitaly Sitko, Larry Merchant pointed out, found a way to avoid the right hand by stepping back. It's amazing the way the fight has turned around where it looked like it was going to be an easy fight, in particular knockout, with Lacey landing so many effective right hands, and where it's now turning out to be a total out and out tough fight and the momentum is going towards Sipko. Sipko, you got to give him credit because he has adapted. He's tried to, to change what he was doing. Jeff Lacey coming off a 272 day layoff, the longest of his career. I mean, surely anybody would have thought the long layoff was necessary after the Kalzaki fight, but of course a fighter has to readjust. Well, after now that Lacey found out he's not that effective with the straight right hand, he's trying to work inside, which I give him credit for. He's still hustling. He's trying to pick up his points regardless. Trying to land uppercuts as the right eye continues to swell and gets into that middle range where shutting down is possible. Well, he's right now he's out working Sipko. Sipko is inside but not punching. He's just physically pushing Lacey back, but he's not punching. And Lacey is actually working the side, and he may only land one or two little shots, but it's enough for him to win the better of the exchanges. Right now. So you give Lacey credit for finding a new chapter here in the yeah. third round, and the inside work sets up Lacey's best right hand since the second down. round. Sipko's volume has just cut down, and when he's busy, he's effective, but he's not busy anymore. Yeah, I think he, he's got a little tired from that, those two rounds where he had a, a big put, a output of punches. Possibly a little physically tired, possibly a little mentally tired, too, because it takes an effort to work your way back into a fight when you've been slapped in the first couple of rounds as Sipko appeared to be. It seemed that when he got that cut, it just kind of took a little out of his momentum. Out of Reading shots at close range. Both guys landing. Sipko taking a good big punch from Lacey, coming back with a shot of his own. Good body shot by Sipko. Tough. Spirited round. A tough kid from the Ukraine who used to be a teammate of Vladimir Klitschko on a national amateur team. If you do that, if, if, if you work like that, you will get tired very soon. Just be more active. Be more active. But use, but use, your, use your intellect, okay? But uh, other than that, you're doing fine. You're doing fine. Hit him to the body. Throw the right hand three, four times. You hurt him. You wobble his ass. Take a drink. Wait a minute. Nope. Wait a second. This way. Take a couple deep ones, Jeff. How's it going? Here you see Lacey getting in close, throwing a lot of right hand punches. Maybe they may not land clean all the time, but they, even if they're grazing, they're doing a lot of damage inside because he's moving forward all at the same time while he's punching. Copy box numbers in five. Lacey threw 62 punches. His high output for the fight landed 20. Sipko threw 32 punches. His low output for the fight landed 14. Lacey goes back on top on the Letterman card after five rounds. And we move to the sixth of a scheduled 10. Sipko's corner gave him good instruction. They told him if he's keep fighting inside, he just want to get tired and wear himself out. And he should get back and get a zone and a distance between him and start fighting on the outside again. Jeff Lacey won his first 21 fights in his professional career that began after the Sydney Olympics. 17 by knockout. He was heavily favored over Joe Calzaki in Manchester, England on March 4th. Got annihilated. This is the beginning of Chapter 2 of Left Hook Lacey's career. All right, guys, don't hold him, guys. And a Lindo, tough guys. fight that's requiring him to think, make tactical adjustments. He's done some very good things. When Sipko gets in close, he just shuts down completely, and that's why Jeff out him. But in fighting at a distance out there, he's very effective. Because when Jeff throws punches, he gets often off balance. He'll throw his right hand and actually walk through with his right feet. And he's very vulnerable for a knockdown if anyone would take advantage of that. And but by determinedly crowding Sitko and shortening the distance, 
he's given himself the chance to start landing that right hand again, right? Yeah, no yeah. Punches, no punches. Sipsko should keep him at a distance where he can keep making so, him get off balance when he punches and then take advantage of it. But he maybe would let Jeff miss, but he wasn't, won't punch back after Jeff misses. Sipko wound up trying to land the body punch. Now gets one into the belly of Lacey, See? and Lacey no fires hardly. back twice there up there. He shuts off. Once he gets in close, he just shuts off, and Jace, Jeff out hustles him inside. Right hand landed again for Lacey. Lacey is now throwing one punch and lunging in and holding. After uh, so much inactivity, he's probably a little bit tired. Yeah, but, but Simco isn't punching back enough, so he still is getting it. To me, the battle does his changes by just being busy. Get out there, guys. Box out of there. Good body shots by Lacey, taking advantage of close quarters. Zipko doesn't throw nearly the volume of body shots that Lacey throws when they're crowding in. If, if Lacey had to fight at a distance right now, the way he's tied in his balance, he would be at a big disadvantage. So what can Zipko do to reestablish that space? He just needs his workers jab and, and, and the counter punch when he's he comes not throwing the, the right hook out the right hook whenever Lacey comes in. He'll take advantage of Lacey losing his balance. Zipko seems to have forgotten what got him back into the fight. That's where he needs to keep the fight, right at that distance, right there. And he should shoot a right jab right away as he's moving back. He landed a couple of good punches, but still let Lacey get right back on the inside and win the exchange. At close quarters, Jeff Lacey's strength and his will to throw body punches are controlling the fight. Coming up on a special edition of Costas Now, an exclusive interview with Sports Illustrated's yet-to-be-named 2006 Sportsman of the Year. Interestingly, somebody wrote the name of the supposed winner on a card for me earlier this evening, but it's been scratched out, and now I can't read it. don't like that body. Hit that body, hit that body, he's that uppercut, step to the right. How's your shoulder? Okay, hit him, hit him on the liver, hit him on the liver. You, you want him out, by the way. You want him out. You have to press more and more. Right now you're doing fine. Right now you're doing fine. Just keep it that way, okay? Keep it that way. Good luck. I think I've heard better instructions than that. Emmanuel. <laughs> Zombie box numbers through round six. Lacey averages 14 out of 51. And Sipko averages 13 out of 37. Harold, how do you have it through six? Okay, Jim. Four rounds to two. 58. 56 shift. Jeff Lacey. Uh, my Tony Sipko just lost control of the fight in rounds five and six. Just like you said, Lacey came in and landed his right hand, took over and won those two rounds to go ahead four to two. But Jim, I gotta say something interesting. Dan Birmingham at the end of rounds five and six keeps saying, how's the shoulder? And they keep putting ice on Jeff Lacey's left shoulder. It's obvious that something's wrong with it. I don't know what. They're icing it down in that corner after every round. Four to two, Lacey. And when your now, name is Jeff, Jeff Lacey. Lacey. And he's not throwing much with the left. Everything no. is strictly right hands, right Right hands, no, right it. hands throughout the entire fight. Well, Very little coming from his left hand. Fighting a southpaw, he would have been using his right hand more liberally anyway, perhaps. But I, th I think, I just, just, I think that the left hooks are very good against southpaws because they never look for that in the same way the southpaws, a lot of them, their best punch is their right hook. Aggressive left hand and then a right going backward by Sipko and there are two good left hands. Lacey got out of position again as, as usual. All, Sip has to do is to pull back and let him miss. But there it is again. He always gets out of balance when he throws his right hand now that he's tired. At medium range, Sipko is getting the better of Lacey. At close range, Lacey's getting the better of Sipko. Yep, yep. he throws the right hand. Here. Right, and he's leaning in and getting in a position when he throws the right hand to work inside. Very interesting fight coming to these last four rounds. Considerably more interesting than most observers thought would be the case. Yeah, it, it, it looked like, you know, two mismatches. But that's why they have the fights. And trainer Dan Birmingham tells us that Jeff Lacey is feeling uncomfortable and that the left shoulder is sore. So, Harold Letterman right on the money. Lacey has complained in his corner about his left shoulder, and that's why they're icing it. He hits Sipko right on the back of the head. 
Let's see if referee Tommy Kemmons warns him. Nope. Sipko needs to just work his right jab, and when he comes in, right there, that's like it. Take one step back and then punch, and not lean in. If he does that, the fight would be a very easy fight for him to win at this stage. Sipko seems to think at this point that he can walk Lacey into a left hand and maybe hurt it. But he works very good with his right hook when he throws it off, so he just needs to take a step back and not have his body right there to hold up his support. And his. three. This is an interesting round. Lacey is still doing significant damage when he gets inside, but Sipko has managed to fight more of this round at range. Takes a right hand after landing a left hand. Another right hand long for Lacey. Now they chop away at close range, and Lacey throws twice as many punches as Sipko, but Sipko lands a right hook and a left hand, and then a perfect right hook shot after the bell. Lacey's working hard, so he's doing what he's supposed to do under these conditions. Let's go to the locker room of Ike Bazooka Quarte. When he came out of Ghana in the late 1990s, he brought with him one of the greatest left jabs to be found anywhere in the sport. A tremendous shot that often rocked opponents in the first couple of rounds. And recently, he's added a very good left hook that he showed in his outing against Vernon Forrest, August 5. The decision went to Forrest. Almost every ringside observer felt that Quarte deserved the win. And Ike said himself, I think I'm the winner. That's why I got this fight. Oh, there's no quit in me. I know that. Here, take a drink. <laughs> Lacey took a bad, bad beating from Calzaghi, and he is taking a lot of punches again tonight, no matter what the result will be. Sipko once again right there, a sitting duck, no head movement. No, I don't think that. Their heads come together again almost. The even, cut outside Sipko's eye has not been a factor. Even though they are putting ice on Jeff Lacey's shoulder, I don't think that's going to hurt him in the course of the fight. He's going to have to just hope that Sipko doesn't become more aggressive and throw more punches and he can still maybe work his way to win a decision don't in push, this fight. Don't push it. But I don't think the ice is going to have to show up during the fight. Good uppercut by Lacey. That's a beautiful right. That right hook. Jab, cross, or whatever you want yeah, to call that it. That right hook he didn't almost see it. buckled the knees of Lacey. Because he doesn't see that most everybody looks for the southpaw straight left, and that's why I say a right hand from a southpaw is his best punch. He's had a series of good right hooks in the last few minutes. So you say to yourself, well, who has Vitaly Sipko been fighting to get ready to fight Jeff Lacey? Well, maybe you've heard of Charles Adamu, or Alexander Zaitsev, or Lawrence Chapman, or Manda Mukaki, or Brian McGee, or Jackson Chene. I gotta confess, I have not. Well, he's doing pretty good right here against and, Jeff Lacey. And, and he keeps shooting straight left hands and quit lobbing them and shooting those right jabs and right hooks. He still has a good chance of winning this fight. We're in round eight of a scheduled ten. Lacey won the first couple of rounds clearly, easily, obviously. Looked as though he might be on a way to a knockout. Zipko turned the fight around in rounds three and four. In a tactical battle since then. Jeff Lacey, for his knockout reputation and his big left hook, has never had a knockout past the eighth round. No, no punching. Step back. Most All big punchers are mostly dangerous early. But you know, I've never looked at Jeff as a big puncher. That's what he looks at. He's more of a he physically strong guy. They, they all get wrapped up to the weight lifted and coming in with your body strong and looking good. But, you know, Mike Tyson was one of the few guys who was a muscular guy who really could punch. But a lot of these guys who build up their body with weight lifting, they, they, they don't have that snap. Frank Bruno, you got a lot of them. And Lacey is, is not really a big puncher to me. I think he's just a strong puncher. He's physically strong guy. What's the difference between a big puncher and a strong puncher, man? One, one that knocks guys out. That's what Lacey's hurt. Lacey's hurt. Sipko right now wobbled him with a right hook. Just as Larry Merchant suggested early in the round, that Sipko can land the right hook a little bit more aggressively. Or was it the left? I don't know. It was a little of both. Yeah, yeah the right hook, he didn't see it. It was the right hook. Yeah. 
The pain, man. Move them hands inside. Come on, you got two rounds. You got two rounds. We need these two. Take a drink, Jeff. It's what I was, Jeff. Come on, Jeff. Get to work. That's what I was saying earlier. The right hook is what he should have been using more, and that's because nobody sees the right hook from a southpaw. And it wasn't so much that it was a devastating punch. He didn't see the punch. Lacey looked in that round almost as if he was ready to go. He's fighting an unranked fighter. He's fighting a tough, crowd-pleasing fight, the kind of fight he's fought in most of his career. But it is certainly not a dominant fight that he was hoping for. Two judges from Florida, one from Michigan. Sipko had the better numbers on power shots in the eighth round, 12 out of 25. Let's see what happens in the ninth. And then, at the beginning of the tenth, we get that far, we'll show you Harold Letterman's scorecard Three, to help set up the drama in round ten. No pushing. Let's go. Sipko looks like the fresher man at this moment. Oh, he's definitely fresher. But he's got to throw punches, though. The one thing he, he thinks too long and his old saying in boxing you think long you think wrong and that's just what he's doing he's hesitating too much there he lands that roundhouse left and manages to get out of the way of, of Lacey's counter and the jab lands for Sipko and again Lacey hasn't really done anything here in the ninth Sipko has landed the more effective punches here and, and to be as vulnerable as, as Lacey is right now regardless of what whether he's exhausted left shoulder whatever Sipko should step it up a lot more. He's, he's waiting too much. Good left. And then a right hook. Left by uh, Sipko. And a short right hook as they got in the clinches. No pushing. Lacey lunging a little bit in this round. Sipko taking advantage. Good quick right hook inside by Sipko as Lacey walked into it again. That's the key punch as Lacey's coming forward is the right hook. Oh, let's go. From Sipko's. Now, that left, that left hand was effective because it was a straight left to the center and not the looping left that Don't Zipko was Jeff, throwing in the earlier rounds. One minute to go in the ninth. This is not what Jeff Lacey's fans expected to see tonight in Tampa. The right, the right hooks again. Now, every time he steps back and shoots right. over short right hand punches, Lacey doesn't see him. He's always automatically watching the Southpaw's left hand. When Sipko took off his gear at the weigh-in yesterday, various observers who had seen his relatively placid exterior and baby-faced, blonde-haired features were shocked at the strength of his body. And he is a sturdy fighter, as he's showing here tonight. And when this round, he's beating the hell out of but you know, Lacey, when you're giving, giving up rounds like he has and it's in the guy's hometown, he should be stepping to him a lot better than this. This is not really the way he should be fighting oh, going into the ninth play. round of this type of a fight. Surely no one would have advised Sipko to make the long trip from Ukraine thinking that he could win a close decision on Jeff Lacey's home turf. He might can, but I, he's not still fighting a small fight. Lacey, Lacey lands a right hand. That was a big round for Vitaly Sitko, with the sole exception of that right hand by Lacey down the stretch. One round to go. Okay, the last round. Please stay concentrated. Do it. And, and keep in. Uh, by the way. Be more active. That's what I'm begging you. Stay close. Stay close. Work your way close with the straight punches and stay right on top of them. It's a tight defense. And we've got to have this round. we got to have this round. Sing it strong, baby. we got to have this round. We're going to give this away if you don't have this round. Come on. Jeff Lacey looked slightly discouraged as Dan Birmingham tried to prime him for this last round, saying several times, we gotta have it, we gotta have this round. Sipko with 17 out of 32 punches in the last round. Is he throwing it up? The trainer doesn't think so. Harold, how do you have it through now? Look at Jim, 86, 85, 
five rounds to four, Jeff Lacey. You know, he had that big early lead, but Tyler Simpo comes back and wins round eight and nine to make this fight very, very close. If Simpo continues with the momentum that he's got, he's got to draw. But I got to tell you some Jim, Simpo's Please killing this, killing Step himself back. by throwing oh, one boys, punch at a time. He should throw some combinations. All he lands is one shot, he stops. If you're landing half of 32 punches, throw Stop, 50 no or punching, 60. No See if you can keep landing at that rate. Let's go. I have it 4-4 four, four, and 1. An even fight. Great right hand by Lacey. The thing about it, it wouldn't even have to be a decision, I don't think, if Sitko would step it up. Particularly Wait, if he would shoot a right uppercut a lot when they started getting out of his pitches. Which I definitely Lacey wouldn't see, but it, it could go to a decision. But it, it don't have to be in this fight. Lacey is very vulnerable. <laughs> Let's assume that Lacey goes on to win a decision here on his home turf, Emmanuel Stewart. Does this performance raise new questions about his career? Yes, because he's been fighting one dimensionally, you know, and I, it raises a lot of questions. I mean, plus Great the combination by Sipko there, left followed by right. Now he lands another straight left. And he's taken a lot of punishment in two consecutive Wait, fights. And believe me, you don't take the kind of punishment he's taken in this fight and with Kawasaki, and it will have an effect on him. Well, I think... I think no matter what the result, okay, guys, get out there gonna, out everyone's going to come out here Jeff, saying no either he's not the Let's fighter go. he they thought he was or he was always somewhat overrated because he was a tough, crowd-pleasing American fighter. Or they're going to say there was nothing left after what Kalzaki did. That's again, you see him get off balance every time he throws it, but... All this guy has to do is to step back and throw a clean right hook as it pulls back. Uh, either right up or cut. Fight would be over with. Stop! No punching. Stop! Let him fight. Let, let's give him a clean Mike right. Mike may still be let's on go. the table with a minute to go. Very well, because I have it almost dead. Even if if, if Cisco wins this round, he's still be in the Moscow. But be close have to you seen Lacey run. do anything to suggest to me that he's winning the round? Wait, well, no he's trying, that's, that's for sure. And if he's got a good, good lead up, all he has to do is try to stay on his feet. There's a right hand landing inside for Jeff Lacey. And that's a now Lacey pitch. trying to let his hands go and do some scoring down the stretch of this round. There's that left up and under and the right hook combination again for Sipko. And he's landing his right hat, right hook with laser so precision. He's Good throwing one, by one, Lacey. But he's throwing one punch still. He's like used to that Europe, the amateur system where you land the punch, you don't throw combinations. You want to make sure the judge is scoring. Big right hook. Sipko wobbled Lacey momentarily with the left hook, or the right hook. And now Lacey comes back and tries to get in one more right. A spirited effort by both fighters in the 10th round. A good fight. Whatever interpretation we want to put on it, the most important thing was it was a good fight. Very Outstanding. Yeah. You hear Jeff Lacey, or you see Jeff Lacey pointing to his shoulder, telling manager Shelley Finkel, I hurt my shoulder in the third round. Harold Letterman gave the 10th round to Sipko and sees this fight as a draw. 95-95 in the last three rounds by CompuBox numbers. Vitaly Sipko landed 51 punches to only 18 for Jeff Lacey. I gave that fight by a point to Sipko. Let's tell you who the judges are who will be yielding the official decision here. Paul Herman from Florida, 11 title fights. And uh, scored 116-112 for Tarver in the third fight with Jones. Not a terribly difficult fight to score. Mike Pernick. Licensed in both Florida and Michigan. 38 title fights. Also scored Tarver Jones 3 116 112. And finally, Mark Streisand, 13 title fights from Florida, had Joel Casamayor winning big over Santana. There's the cut man, Malcolm Walker, who did uh, a very good job of keeping Vitaly Sipko in the fight after the cut outside his eye in. The third or fourth round. Yeah, Malcolm Garrett. Malcolm Garrett, excuse yeah. me. And now, ring announcer Lupe Contreras has the official decision in Jeff Lacey, Vitaly Sipko. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of boxing, the official scorecard reads as follows. Judge Michael Pernick scores about 95 to 95, a draw.
And judges Herman and Streisand scored about identically at 96 and 94. For the winner, by way of majority decision, Jeff Lefthook Lacey. So Jeff Lacey survives a close call with Vitaly Sipko and earns the 22nd victory of his career. That mission is accomplished, but not the resounding result that Lacey's camp and his fans would have hoped for. Lands 130, Sipko lands 148. Sipko landing at a significantly high percentage through the fight. Our punches. Sipko landed more at the end of the day, despite the landslide of the first couple of rounds when Lacey seemed to be landing every straight right. Sipko winds up with the edge in power shots and look at the connect percentage. Sipko landing 46%, Lacey 32%. Two judges found a way to mark the scorecards for Jeff Lacey. And uh, as I mentioned, Emmanuel Stewart, Vitaly Sipko would have been given bad advice if he thought he was going to travel all the way from Ukraine and win a close one-point decision over Jeff Lacey. And I couldn't complain about the decision, even if I was at Sipko's corner. It was a close fight, and, and if a fight doesn't end in a knockout, then it becomes a mathematical thing. And when you start adding up the rounds, you know, it could have went either way. But I thought what was more frustrating with me was the fact that Sipko could have won the fight very convincingly, I thought, if he'd have stepped it up the last two rounds. And thrown more punches, which is what his trainer wanted him to do. Larry Merchant? Uh, it's a win for Jeff Lacey, but what did it do for or against him? I think it leaves as many question marks at the end of the night as there were coming into the fight. Um, let me disagree with my esteemed colleague, uh, Emmanuel. Please do. It's wildly entertaining when you do. <laughs> if he could do all the things Emmanuel hoped that he could do, he'd be a different fighter. He'd be a better fighter. He'd be a ranked fighter. And he'd be beating everybody up. But he's not that fighter. He came, he fought a hard, tough fight against a young American fighter who has really tried his best coming off that horrible, horrible defeat uh, nine months ago. Uh, it took him nine months to give birth to this one. And uh, I don't know if we're going to ever see him beat a real elite fighter. Sipko won the last round on two of three scorecards. What was the third judge watching?